Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Welcome to our homestead. For those of us who are gardeners, self-sufficient minded, or homesteaders, saving seeds is important. But how you save your seeds is extremely important. And today we are gonna talk about exactly how to do that properly. So of course the idea is to keep your seeds as viable as possible. And the viability translates into the germination rate. How, what percentage of 100 seeds will germinate? Really good seeds have a germination rate of between 75 and 85%. But there are four rules that you need to follow to give your seeds the best chance. Now, of course, all of us get excited when the seed catalogs come out and we see the beautiful pictures and we want to grow everything in there, including me. So I've got things like miner's lettuce, amaranth. I've got some other odd things that I haven't tried to grow yet, but I'm looking forward to doing this year. But if you're going to spend $4 on a seed packet, just one plus shipping, you better make sure that you're keeping those seeds in a good environment or if you don't get to them this year, they could not be as good next year. Or if you don't get them to them for two years, then you're gonna to start to have issues. Now, no seed really drops to zero in viability. There's a bell curve there and there will always be some seeds that were, will germinate. They've even germinated seeds from you know the Middle East that were found in clay pots that are 2000 years old. So the germination rate never drops to zero, but you'll have to have a ton of seeds to be able to get at least one plant out of it if the seeds are very old. So before we talk about those four things that you need to do to give your seeds the best chance, we're gonna talk about different levels of seeds. Seeds that last the shortest, seeds that are kinda in the middle, and seeds that last the longest. Those seeds that have the shortest viability time are things like onions, alliums, they're garlic, onions, leeks, chives, things like that. But also some root vegetables like parsnips and sometimes carrots, okra, corn, and celery only have a viability of about two years and then their germination rate is gonna go on the bottom end of that curve and down pretty quickly. Seeds that keep their viability up to five or six years, which means their germination rate is still really high, are things like radishes, cucumbers, and lettuces. Now, everything else falls in between there, like tomatoes and squash, things like that, in the three to four year of viability range. And remember, when I'm talking about the viability, it means maintaining that germination rate that the seed has to start with. So maybe you buy a tomato, a certain tomato variety, it's got an 85% uh, germination rate. That should stay for about four years. But if you're trying to grow something like a parsnip from seed, know that you're only going to have one, maybe two years. And then that seed germination rate is going to really drop down fast. So let's show you how we store our seeds and those four things that you need to do to give them the best chance. So by far, the number one thing that you need to do is keep your seeds dry. If any moisture gets to them, then they are going to be ruined pretty quick and they may start to grow some sort of mold or fungus on them. So keep them dry, dry, dry. The driest place you have to keep them, that's where you need to put them. Now we do utilize desiccant packages and those are the little things that you know says do not eat on them. They come in packages to keep things dry. We use them in our seed packs. So the easiest way for me to store these I found is in these little uh, Sterilite totes right here. A lot of people use these. I then put them in a plastic bag and then within that plastic bag, each grouping of seeds, like this one is lettuces and cruciferous vegetables. These are cabbages right here. They are in another package and they are also in their original paper packaging, which helps to keep them dark, which is point number two. Now this may not look organized and there is probably a better way to organize this, but it works for me. So do whatever is the best for you to organize your seeds. I've got them broken out, like I said, lettuce and cruciferous vegetables, herbs and flowers. This is squash and cucumbers. And then there are actually some miscellaneous things in the bottom that are just in baggies. Now these are the seeds that I've saved from the garden. 
the previous year. Now I should get some little paper envelopes like this to put these in. I just haven't done that yet. But these are still kept in a dark place, so I think they're going to be just fine. So keep them dry, keep them dark. We put them in a closet so no light gets to them, except when we turn the light on in the closet. But no direct sunlight's going to get to them, because if any sunlight gets to these, it's going to deteriorate the coating that is on the exterior of every single seat. So the next point is to keep them cool. Now, there's a big, actually, debate out there about what it means to keep them cool. Now, all of you know that there's a massive seed bank up in the Arctic that all the countries of the world have saved seeds into, and that is to preserve special um, varieties, old varieties, heirloom varieties of seed from everywhere. So you can store your seeds in the freezer, but we're going to talk about the steps to do that. There's a couple things you need to know about doing that. You can also store them in the refrigerator, and I've actually had some seeds, a, a small amount of seeds, in the refrigerator for about nine years. The cool thing about the fridge is it's cold and dark. However, you can get some moisture in a refrigerator. So using those desiccant packs would be extremely important if you decide to put them in the fridge. And that's especially the case if you lose power. So if you lose power and the seeds are stuck in the refrigerator, that moisture, that condensation, that uh, fluctuation in temperature is going to help things condensate in there. That's not going to be good for your seeds at all. So within that debate about temperature and seeds, there are a lot of differing opinions out there. Yes, it is better to keep them in a frozen state. It doesn't hurt the seed at all. However, is that practical? Maybe, but taking up room in your own refrigerator with huge totes of seeds like these, I know that uh, many of you probably have big seed collections. So that's just not practical for us. My wife would throw them out in about five minutes. So for us, we keep these in a dark, corner of our closet and I have found that the seed viability that germination rate has not dropped off in our house is normal house temperature you know low 70s low to mid 70s and it's not an issue if you can find a cooler spot like if you have a home with a basement we don't here in Texas up north in Michigan I did that would be even better Okay, let's talk about that last point to keeping your seeds the best that they possibly can be, and that's air. Now, air can get into this package with no problem. Is this package better than leaving the seeds sit out on the counter? Of course it is. But air oxidizes seeds and can deteriorate their viability fairly quickly. So we started doing a few things recently that helps with that, and that is vacuum sealing in bags or vacuum sealing in a jar. Now the advantage of vacuum sealing in a bag is that it is a space saver. The jar is a big thing that you've got to find space for, uh, and that's fine, um, but having a package like this is going to be a lot easier to store. And as you can see, we've added a desiccant pack in each of these environments. So if there's any moisture at all, that's going to absorb it. What I have here is an oxygen absorber. These are a little bit different. These I put with my seeds also that are just in plastic baggies. So if you don't have a vacuum sealer, these are going to help you big time if you just keep them in Ziploc bags, which is a perfectly fine method. Obviously, most of my seeds are still stored like that. Uh, these are going to help you out a lot. This is a perfect time to tell you about today's sponsor. As all of you probably know already, I am always looking for ways to improve these videos for you. And that includes building my knowledge in video creation, editing, and other areas. If you didn't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes to help you acquire and learn new creative skills. Right now, I am still taking a class on cinematography offered by Finn Bagedly. My goal is to improve how our videos look for you so I can better visually communicate our story or the project. I am excited to continue learning and discovering new skills that I utilize to grow our channel and present better information for you. So to help you make 2022 a year of new learning and growth, Skillshare is offering the first thousand people who use the link below our video a one month free trial on their learning platform. Head below and click the link 
in the video description to start exploring today. So the nice thing about vacuum sealing seed packs, they're nice and flat, obviously. So it's gonna give you a nice, easy to store thing, especially in a freezer. You're, you are gonna be able to get a lot of seed packs stuffed in a small area of your freezer. So let's talk about using seeds that you've frozen before, and that is condensation. So if you need to use the seeds and you take them out of the freezer, you need to let them sit around at room temperature for at least 12 hours. And leaving them out in a mid 70s degree house is gonna bring their temperature up fairly slowly and hopefully alleviate any condensation. Now, condensation is also alleviated by the packaging. And if you take these out of the freezer to plant them, make sure you do it right away because if there is any moisture at all and you wait three, four, five days to plant, then you're gonna have a problem. Now, the only problem with vacuum sealing in these bags is that you have to cut it open. It's not a resealable bag. That's the advantage of sealing in a mason jar. You've gotta cut this open and use the seeds. So you've just lost a bag and you have to use the seeds and refreezing seeds is not an option. So you have to be very strategic about how you freeze seeds. So let's show you how to package your seeds using a vacuum sealer. You can use a wide mouth jar or a regular mouth jar, but the seed packs go in better into the wide mouth jars. This one's already sealed, so I'm not going to reseal it, but to seal these, you just plug in your attachment to the top of your vacuum sealer, whatever brand you have. He, see the difference? I've got the <coughs> regular mouth right there as well. Put your seeds in, put the top on, put it on, turn it on, done. And in here, like I said, I put one of those desiccant packs. So let's actually seal some seeds that I need to seal up uh, using our baggies. So I have got some cherry tomato seeds that I saved from this past year and I'm not gonna plant this year. Actually, sorry, I did start some of them in our seeds, uh, our, <laughs> in our seed room, so we have those already. Um, we've got some blush plums and some black cherries. So I can just take these, I've already got them in a paper towel and in a baggie. I can put that in here along with my uh, San Marzano tomatoes that I really need to save because these are the number one tomato we use here on our homestead for canning. Put those in there, put a desiccant pack in that. And then if I want, I can put an oxygen, oxygen absorber, but that's really unnecessary if I'm vacuum sealing. That's just like an extra added layer of protection, but not a big deal. Um, we gonna, we're gonna put these seeds in here, close the top. This is, I can't remember which food saver this is, the model number, vacuum and seal, and that's it. There we go, all done. We're all sealed up for storage. Now I am gonna leave links in the description below for the food saver that we use, for these oxygen absorbers, the desiccant packs, and the bags, which are really important. Some of these bags, if you get the Food Saver brand, they can be really expensive. But what I found is, is this brand on Amazon has worked perfect. And there's no need to spend like five times as much on the Food Saver bags. I'll also leave a link to the Roots and Harvest brand uh, vacuum sealer for jars because trying to find a Food Saver uh, for wide mouth jars has been almost near impossible for the last three years. And this one works fantastically well, and it was way cheaper than the Food Saver also. So if you have any questions about how to properly save your seeds at home, please leave me a question in the comment section below the video. Now I want you to click on this video right here, which tells you exactly when to start planting in zone 8B for the spring. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.